Hey everybody, it's Adrian, aka Slappy McPhee, and we're here today to do a tutorial on how to flash the Retro Arena RetroPie port base image to an EMMC card. Uh, we know that it's kind of long overdue, and then also seen some recent traffic with some confusion and misinformation about how supposedly our base image can't run on an EMMC. So that being said, um, I'll be sharing some additional information on things, kind of talk through a little bit. We'll go through the process and uh, hopefully uh, it'll help answer some questions for people. So first of all, um, to kind of give a, a brief summary, because I think this is where some of the confusion might lie. If you, for example, go to Ameridroid.com and you take a look when you want to go ahead and purchase a board, um, the, the first showing in the list is the white dot, which is um, a, an EMMC module that has Android pre-installed on it. Then there's the Linux blue dot. Um, I, I think what's possibly happened, because also as well, like if you did a search here, right, you're going to see that there's multiple different ones. And they all have to do with what different flavors of Linux or Android are pre-installed for you to kind of help you... Um, you know, get moving in whatever direction if you were just doing development or you want to use this for a different purpose. So um, that all being said, I think what might be happening um, is that if somebody goes and they purchase the white dot because they're like, oh, well, I want a 16 gig, um, you know, it's the first one in the list, really no reason why I can't pick or whatever. You may see, especially if you're using a Windows machine, um, a problem when you try to plug this thing in to your computer, which, by the way, um, what you're going to want to use is there's two different types. You're going to use one of, one of these two different types. Um, there is a, an EMMC to micro SD adapter, and then there's actually a um, EMMC direct to USB module adapter. Um, what I have here, uh, I actually purchased directly from Hard Kernel in the past. It's a micro SD card um, that you can go ahead and attach your EMMC module. I've got the blue 16 here, right? So you just have to gently get it aligned and then get it clicked in. And then you just go ahead and insert into your card reader. And then you should be good to go. Now, when you plug this in, if you have the um, Android flavor on there, you may have problems seeing it. And that has to do with the um, file system format. Um, it's very similar to also what you might run into, for example, if you flash Recall Box or uh, Batacera. Um, those are two build root distributions for retro gaming and they use XFAT so your computer at least if your Windows doesn't natively recognize um, the partition table so when you're using standard RetroPie or Thera um, based on RetroPie uh, because we use Ubuntu and of course uh, RetroPie and a Raspberry Pi for example uses Raspbian which is a highly evolved and specialized version of Debian uh, made for Raspberry Pi boards uh, you'll see the boot drive because it's a FAT32 but then the main partition is actually uh, uh, ext4 so that all being said um, if you happen to purchase the white dot by mistake or quote-unquote mistake right it's not a mistake at all it's all the same um, hardware for modules it just has to do what's on there pre-installed is um, you're gonna want to do something like going and using disk part which is a system utility on Windows I'll leave a link in the description below here from Windows Central but the cool thing about disk part is is that it not only does a format, but it actually cleans the master partition table on the uh, flash device. You want to be very careful, however, when you use this to, to select the correct disk, because if you don't, you could actually uh, accidentally format the wrong thing and you just don't want to be there. Um, <laughs> it's a bad place to be because when you use disk part to do it, um, it, it becomes very difficult to recover. Um, what you'll do is you'll actually clean and then you're going to select your disk again, uh, create your primary partition, select it, make it active, um, and then you're going to 
format to whatever. You can actually just use what they have here. Um, you can format to NTFS or FAT32. It doesn't matter because when you do write your, your image of Thera or, um, onto your EMMC module or an SD card, um, it's going to format it to the partition table requirements that are actually in the .img file. So that being said, if you had bought one of the Linux distribution uh, EMMC modules, when you plug it in for the first time into your computer, it would look similar to what you might see if you're familiar with this, where you will see the, the boot. So um, I actually have from a previous test on here um, a copy of um, one of our internal betas for some of these new updated changes that we're making. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and kind of show you, right? So if you had gotten it with just straight Linux, if you're not familiar with how this stuff works, it'll come up and it'll pop up and say, hey, you've got something here. So we'll go ahead and take a look. And as you can see, you see the boot uh, drive or partition, okay? Same way with a, a base Linux uh, distribution that's already on the MMC module. In that case, um, if you had the Linux version, my recommendation, even though you can actually have WinDisk 32 Imager directly write the image over what's there, um, or Etcher, I have seen some weird situations sometimes where it just does not play nice. There's corrupted files, other situations. Some people want to argue and debate with me, but I'm just going off of my personal experience. Um, you know, some people say, well, don't use something like SD formatter because the more you format, it wears and tears on the card, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I don't think these cards are actually designed for heavy use, so I just don't see a problem with it. That's just me. So I will actually use um, SD formatter version 4. I've run into some problems with version 5, so I just stick with version 4. So that being said, we'll go ahead and kind of step through this process. Um, what you'll want to do is swing on over to our website and download the latest copy. Uh, right now, um, our base image that we have out to the public is 1.5.2. Um, we are working. It's right now the end of November. Uh, before the end of December, we're going to have um, an updated base um, However, for the means of this tutorial, we'll go ahead and download the raw IMG file. I don't have a data cap. I'm not concerned about using gzip. Um, real quick, though, on the gzip situation. So if you download gzip, and even if you're using Etcher, I implore you to still decompress that gzip file up front. The reason why is that we have seen some people have situations or issues where they write the gzip file and know it shouldn't happen, but it still does because then we end up seeing people come back with either, you know, either they're, they're kind of telling a, a tale or a, a lie. Maybe they did something else wrong, but I've actually had it happen where I've used gzip with Etcher and for some reason during the decompression process, it uh, causes a problem. And so I just prefer to have the raw IMG being written. So I'm going to go ahead and download our base image. If you're on Windows and you've never used um, Internet Download Manager, I, I highly suggest that it's like $20 for your license. Um, works great and it's a great, great product. Um, and I always have much faster connectivity than I do with just using standard HTTP. I mean, you can see here, this is megabytes, not megabits. So when you take a look at this, like right now, right, I'm averaging, you know, in the high 50s for megabytes per second. When you take a look at that, megabits to megabytes, we'll just go ahead that's 440 megabits per second. So that's that's pretty daggum good. Um, I don't ever get that with HTTP downloads. So um, while this is downloading, um, let's see what else we can kind of discuss. Um, once I go ahead and get this written to the card, we'll go ahead and get it put into um, 
my one of my development um, XU4. And actually, while we're waiting for that to download, I can go ahead and take this apart. Um, this is, by the way, the uh, KKSB case. Um, it's a great case. Uh, I did put the little rubber feet on it myself because uh, that way, you know, it sits up off the table. Um, one of the things that kind of happens too for some of the newcomers is um, they're not used to seeing uh, this little switch here. And traditionally, when it comes from the factory, it'll be on EMMC. Right now, as you can see, I have my switch on uh, SD. So if you have it on EMMC, and you don't have an EMMC in there, um, and you power this thing on, and you have an SD card in there, you just get the blue light that blinks in there. Because it has to do with the hardware switch itself in the circuitry. So in this case, we're using EMMC, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it or slide it over to EMMC, which when you're facing it is on the right-hand side. So we will have this prepped and ready to go. All right, so my download is complete. I'm going to go ahead, have it over to my folder, make sure that I see it there. Everything looks fine. All right, so I do have that card in there. I'm going to go ahead, and in this case, since Linux was on it previously, I'm going to go ahead and run the SD formatter. Like I said, each to their own if they don't want to do this. Um, always make sure, of course, the correct drive is chosen with SD formatter. If you haven't run into that before, um, I've literally done it myself with a 500 gig drive and formatted the thing because um, it'll choose the first um, drive that's not internal, that's plugged to a USB uh, port. So, um, or Thunderbolt port or whatever, right? So you just want to uh, make sure. Actually, I'll take the quick time to show you that. Um, what I will do is, um, like when I first set this up, I'll actually go into manage, to device management, and I will scroll down to the disk in question and I'll actually change the drive letter and path to one that's low. Like in this case, I have it on U. Um, because that way, it's a lot more recognizable. Um, some people I've met, they actually say they call it the S drive because it's for SD or whatever. But, um, you know, teach their own on however they want to do that. But in this case, I'm making sure. So I'm going to go ahead and format. Just going to do a quick format. All right, so now we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and see about writing this image. Making sure, of course, that my select, in this case, I have my other external hard drives unplugged, but sure that it's the right one and we're going to go ahead and write now i will tell you that you know emmc modules are, are a bit more pricey than sd cards um and and i can tell you that they do write much faster um when it comes to certain types of images like right now we're cruising along at almost the mid 30 for megabytes per second um, on the image with the micro SD cards um, your mileage may vary more so depending upon the adapter you're plugging in and then the uh, SD card um, with the cost of them starting to really drop um, they say that next year the the cost may actually bottom out you might want to start looking at the u3 um, flavors of cards it's, if you can afford it. Um, it's just something to think about because mainly if you're going to use SD um, 
you know, typically speaking, the U3. So when I'm talking about that, for example, U1s means this guaranteed transfer minimum of 10 megabytes per second, right? Where U3 is 30. So um, that's just something to be aware of. And then you have class 10, which is usually what you're expecting to see, right? Um, with a lot of the um, Raspberry Pi builds, and, and, and you know when you when you use those. And the thing about that is, is that you know once again, you're gonna you're gonna want to be with the Odroid. You know, you, you want to be looking at least at a UHS class one, if you can pick up a class three and afford it, and that's what you're using, I definitely recommend that. Um, just because it speeds things up for you, right? Um, not gonna see it necessarily in performance when you're in the system, but it's just something like when you're doing reads and writes, etc. You know, it speeds things up, the less time you're messing around with this, the more time you're being able to play your games. And we're just about done here. And yeah, I mean, this this is a little bit longer probably than what you expected, but I wanted to go over some different stuff. Um, I'm also a bit long-winded anyway. All right, so our write is uh, successful. I'm going to go ahead and head over here into my system tray. I'm going to eject the card reader. Now I can remove my card. I'm going to go ahead and just gently kind of do a little bit of a twisting motion to pop it off and you see that it pops free. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the underside of our uh, XU4 and right here it says EMMC. So once again you just want to be careful so that you don't mess up any of these little connections but just gently get it into place and you'll hear an audible click. Uh, you probably didn't hear it in the video, but so now this is good to go. We're going to go ahead and get this placed back into our case. That way it's protected. And as I said, I've already switched this to EMMC. Well, that worked. Wow, really? Now I'm throwing them across the table. Make sure, of course, if you have a KKS uh, SB case, that you get the alignment side here. It says boot mode, so that way you can easily get to the switch if you ever need to. Um, the kind of cool thing and reason for that, by the way, while we're talk talking about that, is that, um, for example, we've got a few members that actually run Lineage uh, OS, which is an Android TV uh, build for the XU4, which runs very well. So if you wanted to consume media content and do other things with Android, you can. And then, like, if you have your... Um, which, by the way, if you're going to run Android, you do need to run it on eMMC. It's pretty much a given. Uh, you need to have that that speed of the interface. Um, but anyway, then if you have like your RetroPie build um, on your uh, micro SD card, whenever you want, when you power it down, you can just switch the boot selector, power it back on, and you'll be good to go with uh, what it's going to boot into, depending upon what you choose. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and get this connected and fired up over here and we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple things.
All right, so it's now booting up. So one of the things that, and this is where I think some of the confusion lies, is that not really sure why some people seem to think that it does not auto expand. Um, it actually does auto expand. As far as I recall, we'll go ahead and take a look here. And in this case, um, it uh, has done its typical reboot at a first startup. So that's something that I'm actually going to go over here um, while we're on this video. Is that if you have an EMMC module and it does not auto expand, um, we'll go ahead and head over to our frequently asked questions. Go ahead and scroll on down to question number 22. How can I move my image from a smaller card to a bigger one? So this is the same situation, right? I, sh I could go ahead and rename this, and, and I may do so, but let's go ahead. I like to use a program called Secure CRT rather than Putty. Um, it's much more robust. I just like the product in general. Yes, you do have to pay for a license, um, but I actually also use it for work. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. And if you're not familiar, um, the username for our build compared to the Raspberry Pi build or the traditional RetroPie is Pi Gaming. So I'm logged in as Pi Gaming with the password of um, RetroPie. Now, what you can see here is that the resize actually happened, right? Um, let's say, though, that the resize didn't work, okay? Um, then what you're going to want to do is actually follow these steps right here. And um, in order to speed up this process, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this image. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is use a copy of one of the internal betas that we're working on uh, for some of these updates. So um, I had had been using an 8 gig micro SD card. So what's going to happen is, is that since the auto resizing uh, scripting and configuration files have not been uh, added in the way they normally uh, would be for a brand new flash, I can actually show you how you can go ahead and, and work on that if that happens. So um, we'll be back here in just a little bit. All right, guys and gals, we're back. Um, just a quick recap. I went ahead and flashed a an image, excuse me, that's been uh, dealt with on a uh, 8 gig card to simulate what you would deal with if you run into a problem on an original flash and for some reason it doesn't resize, or if the situation like what we're talking about here in our FAQ, right, where let's say you had a 128 gig card, great flash sale happening. Pardon the pun, maybe pun intended, haha. -ha. Um, on a 200 gig card, you go ahead and pick it up, you back up your 128, go ahead and burn it onto the 200, and you're in a situation where you need to expand manually, right? So we're connected, and as you can see, this is saying that we're roughly about the size of an 8 gig SD card. Um, depending upon your vendor, this might change by, uh, you know, 0.1 or 0.2, whatever, but. Um, that being said, uh, as you can see, we're using 4.9 gigs. We've only got 2.3 available, but we do know, of course, that, hey, we've got a 16 gig EMMC in here. 
So we're going to go ahead and take care of this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change directory into media slash boot. And then we're going to modify the permissions and ownership of the resize file. So there we go. Because I'm actually logged in right now as Pi Gaming, excuse me, instead of root, which um, here I go, I tell you to do that, but uh, this is perfectly fine. You can actually do this Pi Gaming as well. It's just logging in as root itself is, is kind of best practice. Unless you have a lot of experience moving back and forth between root and your standard users. All right, so now we're going to change the ownership. And once again, you need to elevate the privileges. All right, so now we can actually execute the file. Wow. All right, so apologize for that. Um, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why actually it's better to be sometimes if you're in a hurry or um, not super familiar uh, to log in as a standard user and elevate. All right, so it's telling you that it was able to start find, excuse me, find the start point in the partitions. Um, it's busy because of course we're actually using it right now. Uh, partition was resized, we're gonna reboot and then we're gonna run the script one more time. So we're going to go ahead and reboot. And if you're wondering, we've actually put in configurations so you don't have to do sudo with reboot or shutdown. That's actually just something we've done to speed up things for people. So now we'll go ahead and fire up ping so we can get in there quicker or know when we can get in there, excuse me. And what the script is doing is, is that it's put in configurations to ensure that when you perform the reboot, the partition table's unlocked. So then that way you can run the script one more time and have it adjust that uh, marker point. So now we're going to go ahead and reconnect. And we're going to be sure that we go back into the media boot folder and run the script. And now it's been able to activate the new size, right? So now what we can do is, is we can do a df-h to confirm. And yes, indeed, we do see that we are able to sit at the full size of this EMMC module. And then we can reconnect, and we will see that the bash welcome script has updated to pull the correct information. So there you go, guys. I hope that this tutorial was valid for you. Um, Look forward to seeing some more tutorials coming down the pike. As always, we appreciate the community. Uh, we appreciate those in the community that have been stepping up to help out other people as well. Uh, obviously, uh, thank you to our Patreons and any of the other silent donors that have uh, helped us move this project along. We look forward to uh, doing some more stuff for you and make things a little bit more exciting and fun. So other than that, Happy gaming, and we'll talk to you soon.